Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this episode, we are going to fly from London to Paris in the appropriately named Paris Jet. Now, this plane could do with some explaining and uh, people have asked me to uh, do some talking about the plane uh, during the videos and this seems like a good one to start off with because it is not as familiar to everyone as the other planes that I have flown so far. In general, the other planes if I try to talk about them, probably the people listening might know more about them than I do. Uh, at least uh, it feels that way sometimes. So, but this is the Moran uh, Saulnier 760, and the model is from Michael Wilson. It is an old model that he adapted to uh, X Plane 11, originally made for X Plane 9, I think. So, it was released to freeware, even though Michael Wilson does payware planes. And uh, so quality as such until it gets a further update. Uh, but in any case, I figured that if I was going to fly to Paris, I might as well use the Paris jet. And uh, of course, we're going to continue listening to Apollo 12 audio, and they are currently in orbit around the moon and uh, will eventually land, uh, though that will take some time. There'll be separation between the LEM and the CSM and so forth. Uh, so we can look forward to that. But uh, first, uh, somebody else had asked if I could display data um, about the plane in the because I usually show the external view, and I, I don't know about pitch yaw and roll. That seems like even though it's possible, it seems like I don't need to show that because you can see it from how the plane looks. But uh, perhaps, and you can see the huge amount of stuff that you can display uh, with respect to the plane uh, in data outputs, but uh, speed and so speeds and altitudes, I think I can do. And that'll give you the same information I have at the back end because I've got the moving map and XP display showing those two items. Uh, I don't need all planes altitude. There's uh, so much stuff I blanking out on where the heck my altitude is. Angular velocities. Oh, uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so now we have those in the upper left-hand corner. I previously displayed the flight information, but that's sort of redundant given the description of the video. That was originally there because I was live streaming these originally uh, before I decided to just make them for YouTube. Uh, so that was sort of a useless thing, honestly. Uh, anyway, we've got some flickering. We are at Heathrow. I am going to begin the Apollo 12 audio, make sure that's playing properly. Okie dokie. And a little bit of flaps. This is Apollo Control Houston. Oh, that's a very uh, little bit of flaps. Center numbers almost precisely uh, coincide with the onboard numbers so we show 66.1 nautical miles by 54.3 nautical miles on the ground we're at 88 hours uh, five minutes into the flight at this time so this was actually a military trainer that got turned into his business jet it's from the 1950s Estimated my rotation speed. Well, anyway, we're off the ground. Barely. That was uh, spacecraft commander Pete uh, Conrad uh, reporting that they're pressurizing the limit this time. I didn't originally want to put too much information in the co corner because it sort of ruins the view. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we've had no uh, contact with Apollo 12 for the past several minutes. However, uh, Flight Director uh, Pete uh, Frank has gone around the room uh, consulting with uh, his flight control personnel, and all data appears quite nominal at this time as uh, Apollo 12 progresses on its uh, third revolution around the moon. 
Frame rates will be a little bit choppy because we're so close to London and there's all this scenery. So, taking a look at the data for this particular plane. 12 Houston, if you'll give us poo and accept, we'll give you a clock update. Once again, for people who didn't see the okay. earlier videos, uh, Pu is the idle program, program 00, and they have to set the computer to accept data instead of block data, and so so that they can get data from the ground, which is doing most of the computer work right now. So I'm trimming down here. Not that much, not that much. Okay, uh, we're ready to cop. Okay, the map update for Rev 4. 8 Niner, 1 3 0 Niner. 8 Niner, 3 7. These are tiny turbojets. 3.9 kilonewtons each, two of them. 880 pounds thrust. 880 pounds. The empty weight of this is 1,945 kilograms, and Roger, map update, eight nine one three zero nine eight nine three seven. And it says gross weight 3.47 tons, but that's a firm. You ready for your landmark tracking pad? Uh, I don't know if that gross is max takeoff or not. Um, cruise speed is 308 knots. Roger. Range is 800 oh, nautical miles. H1. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and the computer's yours and the H1 pad. T1 is 903541. T2, 9040050. The offset is 12 miles north. Over. To our left is Teddington. We are all over Roger, Bushy Park. Uh, Bushy Park. Okay, nine zero three five four one nine zero four zero five zero and uh, twelve north. That's affirmative. Uh, I don't know what to make of that cloud line. That almost seems wrong to me. Uh, why? This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we presently hmm. show uh, Apollo 12 at an altitude of 63.8 nautical miles. It's a velocity now reading. Uh, oh dear. 5300. There's uh, some weird cloud things going on. Per second. Uh, X Plane 11 just had an update. And I wonder if that has messed up something. I've got a bunch of visual plugins. I think it might have messed up one of my visual plugins. So the clouds are doing weird things. So I'm going to have to find an update. Probably it's X Vision that's to blame for that. Incidentally, as a military trainer, this originally had two machine guns in the nose and racks for rockets and bombs. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we presently show Apollo 12 at uh, an altitude of 58.6 nautical miles above the moon. I mean, it doesn't look like Apollo that sort of thing. We'll be coming into lunar night uh, shortly. At uh, that time, the 12 crew will routinely realign their uh, computer platform. We've got a lot of room We're on the... 88 hours, uh, 45 minutes into the flight. On the speed, it says that... Uh, n n well, I mean, the yellow zone is 350, and that's really where the ne never exceed, exceed speed is. 351 knots. Uh, we're nowhere near there yet. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're monitoring the uh, display and mission control, which shows the onboard data. The uh, crew is presently uh, realigning their platform. We've got uh, 
some 20 minutes uh, remaining on this uh, pass where we'll have Apollo 12 under acquisition. We're at 88 hours, uh, 53 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control. Yeah, so in response to the update, I'm going to have to find some other updates. Seems like there's only a very particular angle I can look at things where the clouds are not going to be messed up. Hmm. I don't want to go down. Uh oh, and we're going a bit fast. Trimming is this a is little Apollo tricky Houston, right now. Uh, we're presently at 89 hours into the flight. Apollo 12 uh, is nearing its uh, paraloon, its present altitude. Uh, 55 nautical miles above uh, the moon. We're over Red Hill? And we have uh, 13 minutes until we lose signal when Apollo 12 passes over the backside oh, of the moon. Oh, that's weird. And this is Apollo Control Houston. Yeah, there's also some weird cloud things happening. Uh, to our right will be Red Hill Aerodrome. And shortly after that, I believe London Gatwick. Uh, London Gatwick is further to our... Well, actually... Uh, is that Gatwick? Ah. Houston, uh, we're less than uh, 10 minutes away I hate now updates. from time of loss of signal. I think that was the aerodrome. As Apollo 12 passes... Uh, that right there. ...around the backside of the moon, uh, Commander uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean are scheduled to transfer into the lunar module. Flight director uh, Pete Frank in mission control uh, just called his flight controllers and said if we have any words of wisdom for the crew before they transfer, let's uh, please pass them up in the next few minutes. He's received no response uh, from any member of his team at this time. We're at 89 hours, uh, four minutes into the flight. So, sorry about the odd visuals today. I'll try and get it fixed for the next flight. I wonder if uh, turning off that one plug-in will help. Uh, no, I think it just made it worse. <laughs> this, this only has half the weird clouds. Okay. We can see the coast. Oh, God. That was a call from uh, Pete Conrad to Paul Weitz uh, indicating that the tunnel is clear and they're ready to proceed into the lunar module. Maybe I can get below the this layer. Let's fly lower rather than higher this time. So I'm going to cut throttle as we're already pretty close to the bad zone. I'm going to turn towards Brighton. 12 Houston, 5 minutes to LOS. Not exactly a straight line to uh, Paris. But that was Paul White's uh, telling Apollo 12 we've got uh, 5 minutes to time of loss of signal as Apollo 12 passes uh, over the back side of the moon.
It's Apollo Control uh, Houston. Uh, mm. We're two minutes away now from loss of signal. Uh, this town to our right is called Uckfield. One minute away now from uh, schedule time of loss of signal. You know what? Uh, it, what one thing that I can do? I I'm just going to turn off the clouds. <laughs> just gonna. There, there's only this cumulus layer anyway. I'm gonna delete that cloud layer. And. Um, we get more visibility. Okay, well, that'll save us all the nonsense for now. Let's go a bit higher. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, network has uh, just identified to uh, Flight Director Pete Frank that we've had loss of signal. On this uh, front side pass, uh, very little conversation uh, between Apollo 12 and uh, the Houston Control Center. In fact, uh, very little conversation on the Flight Director's loop as uh, the mission has uh, proceeded uh, completely as programmed. At 89 hours, uh, 14 minutes, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, so to the right at the coast is Brighton uh, and Brighton Beach. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're two minutes away now from reacquiring Apollo 12. Apollo 12 now on its uh, fourth revolution around the moon. As we uh, reacquire uh, spacecraft commander uh, Pete Conrad and uh, lunar module pilot uh, Alan Bean uh, should be in the lunar module. Meanwhile, in Mission Control Center, we've had a change of shift uh, among the uh, capsule communicators. Uh, Don Lind has uh, replaced Paul Weitz in that key position. We're at uh, 89 hours, uh, 58 minutes into the flight and presently standing by for reacquisition. This is Apollo Control, Houston. France is not currently visible across the channel and I think I set the visibility to somewhere between 20 and 30 nautical miles so that makes sense from here this town below us is Seaford very appropriately appropriately named of course next to it is New Haven and then next to that is Peace Haven. Okay, we're going up a little bit far. I'd rather go faster than higher. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we should be reacquiring momentarily. We uh, presently show an orbit uh, for Apollo 12 of uh, 66 by uh, nautical miles by 54.4 nautical miles.
Hmm. Oh, the control surfaces have weird issues. Again, adapted from an earlier X plane version, so. Apollo 12, Houston. I don't know why it's still shaded like it's covered by clouds. But, well, I guess that's the opposite side from the sun. There's that's a better view. And, uh, calling Apollo 12. Uh, so I got a sideways wind. Hello, Apollo 12, go. Very good. Nice to hear your voice. Right here, I answered 24. You must not have picked it up. Sorry about that. That was Dick Gordon first responding. Uh, more recently, you heard from uh, Pete Conrad uh, reporting on their uh, OPS system aboard the lunar module. Both Conrad and Bean uh, presently in the limb. Okay, can we see? Nope, still can't see France yet. This is Apollo Control Houston. We're at 90 hours, 4 minutes now of the flight. Uh, we presently show uh, Apollo 12 at an altitude of 65.6 nautical miles uh, above the moon. That was uh, Lunar Module Pilot Al Bean uh, using the code name Intrepid, uh, identifying that code name. Uh, their Lunar Module ship is in fact ship shape at this time. So it's Intrepid and Yankee Clipper. Yankee Clipper is the CSM. We're at 90 hours, uh, 7 minutes into the flight, uh, and Apollo 12 uh, presently uh, hmm? at an altitude of 65.8 nautical miles at its uh, point of Apollon. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, I think we can see the coastline of France now. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at 90 hours, uh, 10 minutes now into the flight. 
Uh, we don't uh, expect to hear a great deal from Apollo 12 until uh, 90 hours and 30 minutes, uh, at which time uh, spacecraft commander uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean, both inside uh, Intrepid, will check out the communication systems of the lunar module. This is Apollo Control Houston uh, standing by. Calm system problems. Roger, we're powering up the left comp at this time. Start with our voice check on VHFA with the CSM. Roger, you're coming with a lot of background right now, please. Yep, lower than I wanted. We're about halfway to Paris now. Okay. Haven't really been able to trim it in any sort of ideal fashion so far. Conrad aboard Intrepid uh, talking to Dick Gordon, uh, who is uh, singularly manning the uh, Yankee Clipper at this time. We're at uh, 19 hours 17 minutes. Okay, approaching Normandy now. The town to our right will be Dieppe. Uh, right. Uh, we 
right there. Uh, you're somewhat weaker, but still readable, uh, still considerable background noise. Roger, that's the way it's <laughs> I, I don't want it this way. Is there hope? Let me just say, I cut out a lot of static in this audio. As I did with Apollo 11 as well on those videos. I don't know why the port area at Dieppe seems to be low res. I don't know what's up with that. That's Al Bean and uh, Pete Conrad interchangeably coming on the line as uh, we're undergoing a voice communications check. Rapid, will you stand by on this mode so we can try a range acquisition? Affirmative. Houston, how do you read? Okay, not far from Paris. Really? The first time I tried this trip in the Paris jet, I did it while live streaming, and actually had a random failure, lost an elevator trim. When I say lost, it started flapping, so it started rolling back and forth was sort of annoying, but not as bad okay, as having uh, a whole aileron flapping. But worth remembering that I do have random failures active, it's just that the mean time before failure is 10,000 hours, so it hardly ever happens. That was unbelievably rare. That was Al Bean uh, reporting that they've com completed their communications check. Uh, they plan to depart in Trepid shortly and uh, return to the Yankee Clipper, moving uh, somewhat ahead of the uh, flight plan schedule. We're at uh, 90 hours uh, 23 minutes uh, now into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. I guess it's worth going over the speeds in the upper left hand corner if you're not familiar with them. The first one is the knots indicated airspeed, K-I-A-S. That's the speed on the actual dial here, in theory. Uh, Yankee Clipper, uh, Houston, would you confirm that you're in Omni Delta? The next one is the estimated airspeed, which uh, I believe incorporates the, s the speed of the wind. And so... It takes that into account. Roger, thank you very much. 
and then the true air speed uh, takes into account the difference in density because the way the speed is read inside the cockpit is you know basically it's uh, trying to give you an indication of how the airframe is responding to the air around it so if it feels okay. like 264 knots that's what the indicated airspeed is telling you And that's what's important to a pilot, how how it feels to okay, the air free, airframe. Yes, there are 5,800 each. And let, me, and let me look in the book and find out what time we went on the uh, left power. Just a second. But if the air is less dense than it is on the ground, how it how the airframe feels in relation to, you know, full atmosphere um, we is different from the actual airspeed. The true airspeed accounts for a difference in density. And then the knots ground speed, KTGS, once again builds in the wind speed into and includes the true air speed. Estimated air speed I might be getting wrong. I really don't pay much attention to it. Now this is an older aircraft, but uh, in anything since the 60s, once they get above... That's uh, Pete Conrad uh, aboard Intrepid uh, reporting the uh, ground elapsed times uh, for power on and power off uh, of the, uh, the lunar module. Once they get above 18,000 feet, they stop uh, looking at the knots and start looking at Mach to see how the the aircraft's movement is affecting it and whether they're going too fast or stuff like that what kind of stress they're putting on the vehicle and then once they get below 18,000 feet they look at the indicated airspeed again because past 18,000 feet the indicator speed is uh, less important than how close you are to the local speed Meanwhile, of sound. Yankee Clipper has uh, started its uh, computer program number 22 for orbital navigation uh, we're at uh, 90 hours, uh, 31 minutes into the flight, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, clear skies sure give a uh, different kind of view. But I like a certain amount of clouds. City to our left there is Bove. Intrepid, Houston. Uh, we'd like you to confirm that you're going to pull the uh, circuit breaker on the floodlight so that the light will go out and you close the refrigerator door. <laughs> the refrigerator door, as they're calling it now. The reference there by Don Lind uh, is a floodlight on the, the lunar module, which... Uh, did not uh, turn off at the time of uh, our first transfer into the limb by the two crew members. Incidentally, I said 90 hours, uh, 33 minutes now into the flight. Incidentally, I said this is an old plane, but uh, the Argentine Air Force only retired theirs in 2007 uh, after 48 years of service. And then there's a company called Jet Set International that bought 30 retired ones of these from the French and Argentinian governments. And uh, yeah, I I guess they're doing Apollo something with Control, it. Houston, with them. We presently show, show Apollo 12 at uh, an altitude of 61.4 nautical miles uh, above the moon. 
its uh, present velocity uh, 5,340 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, the uh, ECOM and Mission Control, uh, looking at this data, has confirmed the floodlight uh, aboard the lunar module is, in fact, turned off. We're at uh, 90 hours, 40 minutes into the flight, and Apollo 12 presently at an altitude of 59.4 nautical miles above the moon. This is Apollo Control Houston. Don't want to drain those batteries unnecessarily. We'll try and do sightseeing around Paris, but the fact is that of all the cities, it's probably the laggiest. And that's because it's got custom scenery by, uh, by people who really wanted to get uh, Paris right. Uh, I believe it was a uh, French website that uh, had all the stuff, or at least they had a lot of French stuff on it. But freeware scenery, which is good. I don't have any payware scenery right now. And you can see Paris right up ahead there, pretty darn clear from this distance. It's Apollo Control Houston, 90 hours, uh, 48 minutes. As you, you got to start slowing to down. Which will simultaneously have us descending. Go ahead, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, we'll wait for uh, the high gain antenna to up and your state vector, and the uh, rest attitude in the flight plan is uh, good. Apollo Control, as you had copied uh, the previous call uh, uh, from the uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft, uh, they have dispensed with using uh, Intrepid and Yankee Clipper, identifying to us that uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean have transferred back to the com command module. We're at uh, 90 hours, uh, 49 minutes down to the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Comments on the lighting conditions on H1? Oh, they were excellent. It was very easy to find the target, very easy to mark on. Uh, all of the lighting conditions were outstanding for that. Very good. All right, here we go. Why don't I drop to option B, which is a little bit less intense. I don't know, it's a big difference. You can see all those buildings sort of go away. Uh, maybe I'll keep it to option A. We'll, we'll bear through it.
180 position is 9 or 1 plus 36 plus 21. AOS is 9 or 1 plus 57 plus 45. TEI 11 pad SPS plus GNN. Noun 47 3 7 3 5 8. Noun 48 minus 0 6 5 plus 0 4 9 er. GT 1 0 5 2 3 Five five two zero. Now eighty one plus three one nine er two one plus zero seven two five eight minus zero one three nine er eight. Roll in a pitch one zero seven. Yaw, N-A. Ullage, four jets for one one seconds. And the burn is undocked. Okay, well we can see the Eiffel Tower pretty clearly. Okay, uh, That is a huge yeah, park, by the way. We have you on a high gain, and I'll go to uh, accept it this time. And the map up to you with 9111379136219157245. The uh, TEI 11 pad, SPS GNN, 37358, minus 065, plus 09. That's sort of a business district here to our right. I mean, uh, Roger, the park no, seems to be called Bois de Boulogne. At least, that's as best as I can do. Niner. All the rest was correct. You can see the Arc de Triomphe there, as well as the Eiffel Tower. Okay, that's what I have on the pad. I don't know what I read back to you. I have 04 Niner. And, and uh, all right, all right. Time, to you, this time. You, you get a sufficient idea of good. the grandeur. Well, that didn't really help that much, did it? <laughs> well... Again, a lot of these are custom yeah, buildings now, so... I can't point out every landmark. There are a lot of them. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, the... Uh TEI 11 pad is uh, a uh, contingency pad uh, that is stored in the onboard computer in the event uh, a development occurred uh, that uh, Apollo 12 needed to return on the 11th revolution. Would you try Omni Delta for us, please? Uh, we can still see uh, Notre Dame right there. Reminds me, I need to play that one Assassin's Creed that they offered for free that has Notre Dame. I picked it up and installed it, but haven't actually taken a look at it. I don't know what this huge building over here is, like uh, some sort of... It's almost like a water management system, or it could be a station, but it's huge. I don't know, that seems to be misplaced somehow. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 90 hours uh, 56 minutes now into the flight. Uh, we will again lose signal. We'll come we'll around. Apollo we'll land at, at about, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, from it's actually time. another one of those. We presently show Apollo yeah. 12 in an at uh, they, they like these things where a lot of roads are leading to one place. Miles. That's it's not the Arc de Triomphe, but it's another one of those sorts of circles. 71 feet per second. 
fast till our nation. Uh, I, I can't, I can't Frenchify nation, unfortunately. Uh, so I'll land at Charles de Gaulle International. Pitch there, so we'll continue that now. Okay. Actually, even though it... Well, okay, now that, that frame rate really is going bad. Okay, we'll leave those buildings off for now. Hello, here's the power 12. Go. Basically, you can see the buildings popping in because right, the uh, setting I put it at limits the area uh, in which they show up. This is the Stadium of France, Stade de France. Oop. Just got some more polygons there. Okay, I think I'll speed up now. Houston, we're uh, through sending up your state vector and we'd like to try to get an E dump uh, before you go around the corner. So that is Charles de Gaulle, those four runways. That was uh, Pete Conrad saying that the Apollo 12 crew is happy up there. We're at uh, 91 <laughs> hours. Uh, they sure sound that way. Flight. I don't think they need to be much clarification. And some eight minutes away uh, from that time of loss of signal when Apollo 12 passes uh, above the backside of the moon. They sure don't sound mopey. Houston, uh, we're about four and a half minutes away from uh, LOS at this time. Uh, Pete uh, Frank is uh, actually talking to, to go members for of his uh, flight control team to see right if we have ways. anything to say to Apollo 12 uh, prior to loss of signal. We're at uh, 91 hours, uh, seven minutes into the flight at this, this time. That brings us this close to another Apollo airport system. here, Le Bourget. Oh, I'm going too, way too far to the side. So, so Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're presently uh, two minutes away from uh, predicted time of loss of signal and standing by. Okay, lowered gear. Takes a bit of time to extend. Ninety-one fifty-seven. Oh, roger, roger. Roger. 
here uh, so you can adjourn to the wardroom. I'll pick the shorter runway on the right side here. He's already there. Very good. Pretty soon we're going to have movies on the sand tail. Very good. We're 30 seconds away from predicted time of loss of signal. Yeah. So long, we'll see you coming around the other side. Roger, right. Uh, we've had loss of signal at this time. In that uh, final exchange of conversation between Mission Control Center and uh, Apollo 12, that was uh, Pete Conrad speaking uh, for their all-Navy crew. During uh, this uh, front side... This building right here, though. Revolution, uh, revolution uh, both uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean... Uh, transferred uh, to the lunar module, uh, checked out the communication system. Uh, they're both uh, back in the uh, command module at this time. Uh, this was their fourth trip, fourth trip uh, during this mission into the lunar module. Uh, the next time they transfer, it will be for undocking and the lunar landing portion of the mission. We're at uh, 91 hours, uh, 13 minutes at uh, present, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we're about one minute away now from uh, reacquiring Apollo 12. I think I could take this taxiway. Apollo 12 uh, now on its uh, fifth revolution around the moon. The uh, Apollo 12 crew uh, will shortly be starting a oh, rest not period. the angle I wanted. <laughs> We're at uh, 91 hours, uh, 57 minutes, and uh, standing by for acquisition. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, I think I'll pause the audio right there as they're waiting for acquisition. And we have arrived at Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and I will continue to taxi. Uh, next time, we are going to fly over to Lyon, in a Mirage 3, which should be really quick, hopefully, assuming nothing weird happens. And so look forward to that. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.